Hi, so I'm Brian English, forum named Hyperbytes, and uh, just going to continue this series regarding image uploaders. We've now uh, found out how to upload images singly or uh, multiple images, how to use the drop zone um, component. We've also looked now at how to uh, cycle through a, a number of images uploaded and to resize those images accordingly. So all that's really left now is to record the details of those images within our database. If you remember, if we go back to our original structure, we have our page count and then we have an images subtable. And if you click on the advanced tab, you will see that the obviously the image ID is auto allocated. We have a link to the page content ID and we have a field, a cold image link because there are a number of different th ways you could store the link image in there. Um, I have my preference, others have different preferences. So I'm just going to show you um, from the programming point of view how to deal with all of those different options <coughs> excuse me so if if i just remind you uh, what we have regarding our output here's our output of our um upload so i'm just having a little bit of trouble finding my mouse here that's it um, you'll see that we have the uploads to our full directory and we also have a cover directory that could be additional it could be thumbs that could be mid-size images there's really no limit to the number of different sizes of image that you could have stored by repeating through that um, image sizing steps With what we've got to do is look at what we're actually going to store in that database. And what we can do, we can either store just the image itself, the image name, which will be this part here. Or we're jumping around a little. Um, let me just zoom in a little just so we can see better what we're doing. So here we have our image name in this case roof2 underbar 2.jpg you'll see here that this public uploads page images is common to all of the images and the one is common to all of the images that are stored within that particular subfolder that we're using to store the images so there's repetition within the file name um, and we basically only have the um, file name that changes significantly so we have a number of different ways we can do this we can either store the entire path within our um, database or we could store which uh, stores perhaps a part path perhaps the main part that public uploads Im page images part and dynamically create the one um, or we could just completely create this path dynamically within uh, the app connect end of our um, page which is actually the my preference is just to program it in the app connect stage but i want to just show you what the different options are here so i'm just going to use a number of set images here um oh sorry set values here just so we can see what it is so we're going to start with full path I'm just going to do the um, the actual image uh, the, the the image details that we have in here. So full path would be path, and that would be the full path and including the image name. Or we could just store the full path without the image name. So we can use a set value. We'll call that path only and the value again what we can do is we can start with a path but we actually want to strip out the file name off the end of that path to be honest the easiest way to do that it's quite straightforward to do is to click on our formatter 
we're going to uh, text and we're going to do a replace within here we're going to search for the file name sorry we it's opened on the other screen we're going to search for the file name and we're going to replace it with null now that's actually slightly programmatic getting a null into this particular section here so what i actually do is i'll, I'll put a, a random letter in and then i'll open that with the picker go into the code and just take the letter out so we have a null in there and what that will do is that will take the path it will strip the file name out and just return the path only or the third, we could just manually build that. Um, bear in mind, these are all options. You don't have to do all of them. It's just which one. Um, we'll call that man manual. In this case, our value would be um, slash public slash uploads if I recall correctly let's just double check that because actually all we need to do is copy that there's our path there and there that will give us the path but not the image name again so there's our different versions of it let's check in because that's just the way it's wrapped makes it look a little bit strange. Um, let's make sure they're all output. I want to save that. I'm now going to go back into our image upload page. I'm going to just remove all of those images out and then put just one back in. And let's clear. I'm just going to zoom back out again. Let's clear the console. Let's submit that. And let's have a look and see what we have here. What we see is we got the full path that we stored initially. That is what the path from the uh, save returns We've got path only that is if you remember the um, images minus the file name and actually what you saw we take that s out but it's it's back in there somehow so we'll take that out and that's how we manually built the string so there's three different ways of building that string if you want and of course you can do this in the, the, the um, app connect end as well We'll just have a look at that. You see there that that hasn't actually taken out that S. So we'll just take that out again. We can see now that. So that's what that should have been. So there's our f different ways of creating the path. But in actual fact, I don't do any of them. What I do is I will just simply save nothing more than the image name. So what I need to do now is basically just do a file insert at this stage and insert that image name into our database. So I'm going to add an action. I'm going to go into our database actions and I'm going to do a database insert. And I'm going to insert into the images page. And what we need to do now is to set these. So our that page content demo ID, don't know where that's come from. Oh, because I picked the wrong, sorry, completely the wrong uh, server action there. Page content images, that's going to be set to the post value that we had for that, which we'll find up here. So post page count content ID, our image link field. I'm actually going to set to the image name 
And a create ID will be, of course, the identity that is of the current logged in person. Um, which I'm quite sure will be here somewhere. Getting to be quite lengthy, this. Okay, I'm not actually seeing that, so let's just save that. Let's add that in. We'll do a security identify. Security provider, security identify. And then when we've got that, we can just use that for our identity of the creator of that image. which is just there. So now we're saving the page content ID, which we've got from that posted variable. We have the image link that we're taking from our repeat within the um, serve action itself. And then we're saving the creator along with that as well. Let's save that and let's actually see if that works. So let's again pop open our screen let's remove that let's uh, put I'm going to put three different images in and I'm going to submit that we've got success which is always a good sign and then I'm going to now go into our database manager images and I'm going to do a view data and you'll see there those were some old entries we did for test purposes, but you can see that it has indeed loaded those three image names in to show that they're on page one and the creator was myself um, 14. So that shows that server action has now worked correctly. We've got those images uploaded, we've got them rescaled, we've got their details saved in the database. So all that remains for us now in our next stage will be to show them in our page so we can actually see what has been uploaded. So uh, that will be our next module.